After reading World Made by Hand and The Long Emergency, I set out to chat with the author James Howard Kunstler about candles, kerosene, and living through this time period of peak oil. Are you going to be sitting here with me? I am. That's cute. Marina, bring your makeup box now. Let me just grab some. It's good and good for you. I don't care what they say. All right. It is what it it's, is. It's right? organic. Not. I wanted to know what kinds of things do you do, knowing all you know. Well, you know, it, it might be better for me to start by saying the things I don't do. Okay. You know, I'm not a survivalist kind of nut, you know. I'm not uh, hoarding brown rice in, in plastic tubs. No, I'm not, I'm not, um, I don't have an arsenal of firearms. I'm not expecting uh, a bunch of Mad Max thugs to uh -huh. come up the street and... What about big lighters? What about like buying tubs of big lighters? I'll tell you what I'm really into. And trading them. This is maybe a little weird. I'm into like lighting stuff. Like I, I do order candles uh -huh. in large lots, and I use a lot of candles yeah. for atmosphere. Uh huh. Because I like to throw dinner parties. Yeah. I don't know. That's probably not a long emergency type thing. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. But I am fascinated by alternative illumination. What about making your own candles, Jim? Well, I haven't really gotten into slaughtering the hogs and. Uh -huh. uh, you know, and you have to keep the bees, and we've got the bee die-off disease, right, and right, right. you know, it's kind of problematical. Oh, you know, kerosene lamps now. Okay. The thing is, you know, you could probably get enough kerosene to last you a lifetime in, uh, you know, like t a 10-gallon really? jug. I say that as somebody who had a, um, what they call a camp in the Adirondacks, which is the vernacular for a cottage, that, um, required me, it was off the grid, and I used a lot of candles and a lot of kerosene lamps, and, and uh, um, it was amazing how, you know, I'd buy like one jug of, of kerosene and it would last for like three years. It is made from petroleum, and yeah. God knows what the, uh, the destiny of that is, but, you know, if you acquired a certain amount now, you, it would last okay. a long time. Maybe you could pass it down to future generations if you. Yes, got more possibly than you, you could leave it to your, leave <laughs> it to your heirs and assigns. I have a dowry. What is your dowry? Ten gallons of kerosene. Yes, you could put it in your trousseau. I also have um, a certain amount of uh, rechargeable electric lantern type things, and rechargeable solar battery um, rechargers right. and stuff. But that just came out of a kind of a boyish fascination with science project type stuff, you right, know. Right. But otherwise, you know, I, I actually lead a fairly conventional life of a, a mostly 20th century person, which means I'm living in the past. So besides this solar gadget you have, do you have any other alternative energy sources? Negative. Negative. I did run a solar electric unit on my Adirondack Lake house once mm -hmm. I sort of got established there and I realized I'd never have electricity. I got about uh, a $3,000 sort of uh, junior solar rig. We didn't ask it to do a whole lot. You know, we, we basically wanted it to run the water pump uh -huh. so that we could have, um, you know, running water and hot showers. I got a Bosch Aquastar um, water, on-demand water heater. Mm -hmm. A wonderful thing, but it is a propane or, a, yeah, it was a propane-fired heater so uh, you know that is a fossil fuel although it was a lot a little of it went a long way I, I don't think I changed the propane tank once in three years it was a wonderful thing it's really beautifully engineered but I, I wouldn't necessarily call it a long emergency type because it is or you know propane dependent one of the things that I'd like to do as I morph out of my rented meth lab <laughs> Sorry, for, for the dog is <laughs> snorching over there. I'm really hot to get a wood-fired cook stove. There are these wonderful things you can heat your whole house and, you know... Um, cook your eggs on cook it. Cook your eggs on right. it. Cook, you know, heat your tea water and all like that. I'm sort of half inclined to think that we might have to go with coal because that might be all there is. But then, you know, you think about all the, the terrible damage you're doing to the atmosphere, but then what's the difference between right. wood and coal? And, right. You know, basically, we should probably all just sit there and freeze, and that would be good for the right, planet. Right, right, that would be. 
But the good news is, you know, none of us are going to be around in 60 years, so right. we'll be on to the next adventure, right, Chris. I get a lot of guff myself, but then I invite it, I suppose, guff. you know, you, um, by being it, a pro. It, yeah, yeah, you're provocative.